It's been 28 days since Leon spiraled out of his old shell and left his old life and his scars behind. I did save his old claws. I didn't make soup stock out of his old shell like so many viewers suggested though. I've never made soup from scratch in my life. I don't cook that much. Someone will need to post a good recipe to the comments section here. No wait, <laughs> don't do that. His old claws are amazingly tough, big and hollow. They would make cool wind chimes actually. Notice how distinct the rubber band marks still are. And now that I'm able to get a close look at Leon's claws, I'm wondering again just how long his claws were rubber banded shut. Look at the indents here. This reminds me of my jade plant that keeps growing around the band and stick I used to hold it up. I wonder if Leon's claws were banded shut shortly after the last time he molted. The awesome teeth on the crushing claw a lot like our molars. Uh, I pinch you. No, I pinch you. I pinch you first. Not if I pinch you first. <coughs> Here's a look at how his claws have progressed. This is when I brought him home from the grocery store. And after the bands were cut off, and when his claws weren't working, they wouldn't open and close. Then here, when he gets his movement back, This is what they looked like right after he molted. And what they look like now, today. I am curious about how much Leon has grown since he molted, but obviously I'm not going to just grab him up and try and measure one of his new claws to find out. So, I measured his old claws. His old pincher claw is almost exactly five and a half inches. Then I waited until he parked by an object in the tank, like this clamshell. Leon puts his pincher claw right against the clamshell here. Then I took the shell out and measured the shell. which is just over an inch and a half. Obviously this isn't machine shop accurate, but it will give us a pretty close measurement of Leon's new claw. Or at least tell us if it's grown some. One and a half inches, three inches, four and a half inches, six inches, seven and a half inches. So I'm going to say conservatively, because the clam is at a bit of an angle and it's in front of his claw, so it's not right flat on the measuring plane, I'll say it's six and a half to seven inches, which would be a huge growth of an inch to an inch and a half over his old pincher claw. Obviously, it's also wider now too, more girth. Leon has been eating like crazy since he molted. He's out constantly searching for food. 
His dishes are strewn everywhere, a lot like my kitchen sink. He's even checking his old dishes to see if he left anything. When I feed him, he comes out and devours it. This is a muscle out of the shell. Watch his lower hands. He literally has food in his mouth and an extra sandwich in one hand. You know when you're eating so hard and some of it flies up onto your eye? And you just wipe it off and you keep on chowing down because it just tastes so good. We've all been there. We don't care who's watching us, we just dig back in. And when another piece flies up, you just smack your eye and keep on chewing. There's also an anemone in the tank, so Leon's crumbs won't go to waste. Here's a good view of his new claws. Look at the girth of his crusher claw now. I know what you're thinking, Leon got new dental work. But no, Leon hasn't been to the dentist. That's his natural mustache. Cracks me up when I see it though. Here he's found a clam and for some reason decides to bail out of it. Something probably touched one of his highly sensitive legs, and that was a safety jump. Even a few weeks after molting, I'm still feeding him a lot of shrimp in the shell. He loves these. And they're a good source of calcium to strengthen his new armor. I've also been feeding him frozen krill lately. They're small, so I spread them around the aquarium at night so he can hunt for them and forage. Here's a good look at Leon's back patch, the coral dust that he can't reach. I know this messes with some viewers' OCD. Look how symmetrical it is though, and a nice design, like he's designed his own ink or something. If you've kept aquariums for a while, you know the importance of gravel cleaning and water changes. This is a regular chore, along with picking up Leon's dirty dishes. 
I leave some in for a few days so he can forage through them at night to see if he's missed anything. Then I tidy things up and start over. I think Leon put this clump of seaweed here in front of his door. One morning it just showed up there. Andy comes out and dresses it and adjusts it once in a while. At feeding time though, he came flying out of his lair and just rolled it with him all the way up to where his food was. Here he gets what some of you call the zoomies again. Here in the South US, we've always called it showing out, getting wild, scratching out. So I'm learning about the zoomies from some of your fun comments. Is it a European term? A dog person term? The ocean is a tough place. Living up here in the air world can be a tough place too. Most of us have scar tissue of some sort, some more than others, whether it's growing up in a bad home life or childhood, being bullied at school, being repressed, suppressed, held back at work, and actual real physical scars from injuries. I've got several from BMX and motocross racing over the years. So it's cool to see Leon shed his old scars and grow larger and stronger. He is surviving and thriving. I'll have another update soon. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And feel free to share it with friends you think might enjoy meeting Leon and following his journey. Also, if you want to share Leon's love wherever you are and wherever you go, just click the link here in the video description for cool Leon merch or go to www.leonthelobster.myshopify.com. We'll see you soon.